The engineering design for Concorde was complex and involved crossing boundaries that had never before been crossed by a civil aircraft designer. There was no precedent to guide the engineers, and there were many new materials used for the aircraft. The designers also had to consider the unique challenges of supersonic flight. The power plant designers had a particularly difficult task. They needed an engine that could produce enough power to get the aircraft to Mach 2 plus and sustain the speed for hours at a time. This meant that the power plant would have to deal with airflow requirements in the subsonic, transonic, and supersonic ranges. Ups. One of the major difficulties with the power plant was the requirement for a large quantity of high temperature exhaust gases. This resulted in a need for a large number of high pressure compressors, an engine combustor, reheat and primary and secondary nozzles. In addition, the engine required a unique air intake system to ensure that the engines got sufficient cooling. This meant that the engine nacelles had to be constructed with structurally independent parts, namely the air intakes and the engine bays. The wing was another area that required considerable work. The slender delta shape is a good shape for supersonic flight, but it's not ideal for subsonic flight and it takes considerable effort to design good control and handling qualities into the wing. It took several years before the final wing configuration was settled upon, and each change had to be thoroughly tested in wind tunnels and in the air. Concorde was the first jet to fly at supersonic speeds and set a whole new standard for cabin design. It was a luxurious ride, with a small number of seats and high ticket prices that gave it an aura of exclusivity. To maintain the air quality during supersonic flight, the cabin had to be completely sealed off from the rest of the aircraft, and a special paint job was developed that would reflect rather than absorb heat. The white paint helped to keep the temperature down even at the plane's blistering speed, and was a crucial component of the Concorde's uniqueness. When passengers boarded Concorde G Boade, Alpha Foxtrot, they walked into a sleek, elegant interior with large leather seats covered in ink blue Connolly fabric. The seats were ergonomically designed to cradle the passengers, with a footrest and contoured headrest to support their heads after all that champagne. The control panels were complicated, with a multitude of switches and dials. One of the designers, Fred Finn, who was a British Airways cabin crew member on Concord, and went on to be recognized as the world's most traveled person by the Guinness Book of Records, said, The seat armrests were also shaped to resemble BA's Speedmark logo, an unobtrusive way for the airline to own the interior without obvious branding. This reflected the design philosophy behind Factory Design's work on Concorde, with the goal of creating a sophisticated modern interior that was streamlined and high-tech but professional, unfussy, and timeless. Engine Design the biggest challenge of Concorde's design was not the engine itself, but how to direct air through it. Jet engines cannot operate correctly unless the air they are fed is subsonic and at a level below the speed of sound. The nacelles which housed the engines had to be designed to do this without adding a lot of drag to the aircraft. The engineers devised a system of moving ramps and doors that kept the intake air flowing in a steady subsonic flow despite the changing conditions of flight at Mach 2. This innovation allowed the engines to produce more than three-quarters of Concorde's forward thrust. Other innovations included a computer-controlled variable geometry intake system. This used a series of sensors to collect data about the aircraft, total pressure, static pressure, angle of attack and side slip, and sent it to air intake control units located near the air intakes. The units then activated the doors and ramps. This digital signaling was accomplished by screen-twisted pair cables, replacing what would have been an enormous weight of aircraft wiring had analog signal wires been used. Another significant development was the use of reheat or onboard combustion of fuel in the engine exhaust pipes. This was the first time such a system was used on a commercial aircraft. The reheat system was situated in the rear of each engine. The nozzle was made from a specially formulated welded steel honeycomb material. Limitations and Problems as with any project that aims to fly faster than the speed of sound, there are several limitations. For one, flying supersonic requires a massive amount of fuel. As a result, Concorde was incredibly expensive to operate. It also produced a noise that would disturb people on the ground, so it could only travel over water. The Concorde was a symbol of the luxury of air travel, and it became a privilege for a wealthy clientele. However, Concorde's popularity waned after a tragic crash and the 1973 oil crisis. Moreover, rising maintenance costs made the aircraft unprofitable, 